Welcome back to The World Over. My next guest has been leading an effort to ensure access to clean water for every human being in the poorest parts of the world. But tonight, he's here to tell us about a heartbreaking situation right here in the United States. We take clean water for granted, but there is a community in the Southwest that isn't so lucky. To discuss is the founder and executive director of Dig Deep, George McGraw. I sat down with him recently here in Washington. Take a look. George, great nice to, to see you. you. Raymond. Thanks for having now, me. Now, why are there two million people, which is kind of a stunning statistic, without access to clean water in the United States? This doesn't make any sense to me. It is really crazy, and it's it's almost embarrassing to know that I didn't know either uh, until a donor called my office a few years ago and said, "Listen, I have a little bit of money to spend. I'm." Um, you know, a, a Catholic school coordinator up here in Ventura, California, and I brought my kids on a mission trip to Arizona. We were going to put this money into a well project in Africa, but I think it's better spent here in the United States. Wow. Yeah, so I followed her out to New Mexico, um, saw the incredible need in that area of the country, and yeah, there are probably up to a couple million people right here at home who still don't have that thing that you and I take for granted, clean running water, and it's Be crazy. Because, I mean, most of your work is abroad. It's yeah. in places like Africa and, and, and the, the Middle East, correct? Yeah, that's where we got our start, East and West Africa, South Sudan, Cameroon, some of the poorest countries on earth. Mm -hmm. And really, in these communities in the Southwest and in other parts of the United States, you see poverty that's really similar. I mean, people mm. getting up in the morning, grabbing a bucket, walking a couple miles to a livestock pond or you know, oh. a trough, and, and bringing all the water home that they need for the day. It's, uh, it's, it's remarkably similar. Wow. I want to tell people about this project. Dig Deep has a new initiative called the Navajo Water Project. It seeks to help thousands of Native American households without access to running water or basic sanitation. The Navajo Reservation is the size of West Virginia, and it covers parts of New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Watch this. As part of their greater effort to bring clean water to the nation, Dig Deep is working with a very special client the St. Michael's Association for Special Education. St. Michael's relies exclusively on very expensive bottled water for all their needs. Their tap water is unsafe due to high levels of lead and arsenic. As you can imagine, the children of St. Michael's are particularly sensitive to these contaminants. This is Brianna, a student with autism at St. Michael's on the reservation, describing what she and her classmates face every day. We have to to buy our water at the store and give it to each class. This class use small water for suctuary, hand washing, and deep factory. Some of our tap water is black and sticky. Water, water. is life. What? What is it like? So you became involved with St. Michael's through this volunteer you were talking about earlier, right? Yeah, so we started the Bigger Navajo Water Project, and then that volunteer reached out. Wow. And, and what are the biggest obstacles you're facing now that you are initiating this project and you see these poor children, what they're contending with? What are the biggest obstacles? Well, this is a very rural area with very little access to technology or funds. Um, this school, St. Michael's Association for Special Education, is the only special needs school on the entire Navajo Reservation, which you said is, is the size of the state of West Virginia. I mean, these kids with severe medical and developmental disabilities are bused from hours away just mm. to get care at this school. Um, and so we are, we're, our biggest hurdles are financial, of course, raising the money it takes to build a water treatment plant and to replace all of the plumbing at St. Michael's. There are 26 individual buildings, classrooms, group homes mm. that we'll have to retrofit. Um, and then the other, the other you know, obstacle that we've had to overcome is pulling in the right experts to analyze this water and figure out just how to clean it, the right mm. plumbers to do that work. And that's coming along really nicely. We've built um, a, quite a volunteer coalition, I think. Wow. Now, why is it that is it just a pocket of this reservation, or is it the entire reservation itself that, that suffers from contaminated water or unfit water? Well, it's 40% it's of people living on an entire wow. reservation, so almost half. And, um, and some of these people don't have any running water at home, and like I mentioned earlier, they're collecting it but, from but outside wait, 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 i got to stop you, George. Yeah. Where is the federal government in this? I mean, it's ba this is a basic necessity. I mean, you couldn't be in, in Brooklyn, New York, and, and have whole uh, portions of, the, of that town without 
clean water. It really is. It's so embarrassing that, you know, we're the only developed country with this kind of problem inside our own borders. And it's because of a long, complicated history um, with native settlement and with the federal government and state governments. And essentially, there's just a blame game where everyone's pointing fingers at each mm. other. And so Dig Deep is coming in and saying, just, just stop. You know, stop blaming each other. We need to figure out how to solve this together. It's going to take help from the federal government, from state government, and from private actors like charities, mm. like individuals mm. that can come in and fix this problem. Because the reality is that we're all American. And this is an American problem, and it's going to take an American solution. And we have the es expertise, we have the resources, mm -hmm. and we can get this done in a couple decades. What are the parents and the students at St. Michael's telling you? What have they, how have they contended with this all this time? Well, you know, we didn't know about the situation at St. Michael's. We were working um, about an hour away in New Mexico when I received an email from one of the teachers um, and one of the students, I think part of the video that we just saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't believe our eyes. And the, you know, the teachers and the parents found out that we were doing this work a few miles away, bringing clean water to people's homes. And they said, you know, we, we have a, a population here that really needs your help. Can you come oh. see? Can you come help us out? Um, that video just broke my heart when it, when it showed up in my inbox. And um, I think it's a real struggle for them. You know, these teachers sacrifice a lot. They move to the middle of nowhere to serve these kids who no one else is serving. And mm. the parents sacrifice so much, too, to drop your kid off at a school every day, knowing that that's the only place they can care for them, but at the same time they don't have clean water, it must be tremendously difficult. Uh, tell me about this woman, Darlene Arviso, who was, they call her the water lady. How have you aided her work, and why do they call her the water lady? Yeah, so there are a few heroes, saints, if you will, operating on the Navajo Nation, trying to solve this problem themselves. And Darlene Arviso is one of them. When I first arrived there in 2013, she's a school bus driver that would drop off her school bus every day, pick up a water truck, fill it up um, at a spigot, and then deliver as much drinking water as she could to everyone in her neighborhood. Um, and, you know, we came in and said, Let, let's help. Let's find new drivers, buy better trucks, build new wells. And let's go house to house so that instead of keeping water in buckets and barrels and pickle jars, you mm. know, people were holding water in anything that would, that would hold it. Let's put running water in those houses. Let's build that infrastructure, those systems. And so we've partnered with Darlene to do that work, and, mm. and it's going well. How do you sensitize Americans who are sitting at home now? You know, they, they wash their hands, they fill their glass uh, in between commercial breaks. It's not a thought. Water is really an afterthought. How do you sensitize them to water scarcity, water poverty? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the average American uses 100 gallons of water a day. A lot of our clients on the Navajo Nation get by on less than one. You know, mm -hmm. they'll use the same water to, you know, wash some vegetables and then cook some pasta, and then they'll drain the pasta and bring that water to the living room and use it to wash their hair or wash their hands, mm -hmm. and then they'll pour it in the back of the toilet tank and use it to flush the toilet when they're done. They have such a different relationship with water. They understand how valuable it is, how sacred, which is something that we as Catholics, um, mm -hmm. you know, know water is a sacramental for us. It is. Mm -hmm. It is our lifeblood. So it is one of our missions at Dig Deep to really change the way Americans think about water, to mm. value it for the first time. And we do all sorts of work um, in, in that respect. We do curricular work in schools. One of my favorite things we do is once a year we challenge people to try living off of just a gallon of water for a whole day. Yes, I remember this challenge. Yeah, the four I didn't fare too well. <laughs> I'm sure you did great. Um, but yeah, we're always trying to figure out creative ways that we can give Americans that experience. And I think that working on projects like the St. Michael's Project, like the Navajo Water Project here in our own country has helped because Americans wake up and they see that you know, these, these folks struggling without clean water aren't halfway around the world. Yeah. Their lives don't look so different from ours. Mm -hmm. You know, these are American families that go to our public schools that have, you know, zip codes and telephone numbers that you could just get in your car and go visit. And uh, that, that makes it real. Yeah. Uh, how can people help? I know we're going to get calls, letters, and emails about this. So how can they help? And where and how is that money deployed that people donate to? Yeah, well, I certainly hope we get a lot of calls and emails. I think this project is so worthy of people's support. Um, the primary way people can help is by visiting our website, digdeep.org. Okay. And um, they can make a donation there to the St. Michael's Project. They can share a video that the students made. They can learn all about um, the ways we'll be helping St. Michael's. But mm -hmm. Essentially, we'll take 100% of every donation that comes to us. We won't take an administrative cut off of it. Mm -hmm. And we'll send that money right to this project. We'll build a water mm -hmm. treatment plant to take out all that lead and arsenic, to take out the color and the smell. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go building to building on that campus, and we'll replace sinks and pipes and water heaters. And by the end of June, mm -hmm. God willing, 
uh, the students and teachers and parents at St. Michael's won't have to worry about their water quality anymore, and yeah. they'll have the same water you and I enjoy at home. Well, those are some terrifying images when they when they open the sink and there's that Can black pool in the in the sink. It's 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 terrifying. Americans should not have to live like that. No one should have to live like Especially that. Especially those, particularly kids. in a wealthy country like this. You can find out more about George McGraw and Dig Deep's efforts on behalf of the Navajo and how you can help by visiting digdeep.org.